What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Keep It Hoop YouTube channel. So on Wednesday, the Bucks had a really big comeback win over Philadelphia on the road. And I'm sure you guys have seen the photos or the videos of Giannis sitting at half court, smiling and, and after securing a pretty big win for his team. And it, it was it was somewhat of a, a statement game from the Bucks, but also Giannis, who, as I talked about in yesterday's video, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But, you know, he's been someone who... Everybody knows he's still one of the best players in the world, but he has kind of fallen under the radar in terms of at least just coverage and and just people talking about him, which is kind of weird because, again, everybody knows how good he still is. And he's been playing really good as of late. His free throw numbers have gone up. I think his three-point shooting, while not great, is is at a level that if you're a Bucks fan or a Giannis or, or people on the team, you live with hovering up, uh, around 31%, 32%. And the Bucks have been playing better as of late, and and this is it's a team that I, that I was pretty critical of early on. I thought they struggled. I thought they were inconsistent, and I thought they just weren't the team that everyone expected them to be, or that that they have shown that they could be. And you know, I I wanted to break this game down because on both Philadelphia and Milwaukee side, I think there are definitely things that we could take away from things we learned about. Um, their strength, weaknesses, and just kind of where they stand right now. And I know Joel Embiid is not playing, so Philadelphia isn't at full strength, and this isn't the glorified playoff preview matchup that we we would have liked to see with both teams being at full strength. And, and PJ Tucker obviously not in Milwaukee or, or at least suited up um, yet, so that's another piece missing. But still a good game, and I thought there were there were definitely things that that we could learn from it. So I wanted to break some of those things down. Uh, before we get started, though, if you could like, subscribe, share, and comment would mean a lot. We're almost at 200 subscribers for this channel, and we're always trying to grow our social media pages. So follow us there. Links will be in the description below. So the first thing I wanted to point out was the defense for the Milwaukee Bucks. It is something that I have talked about before. It is nowhere near the elite level that they have been in the past or have at least shown to be capable of becoming. And... I guess they've shown glimpses of it again this year, and, and you obviously have good defenders, and Divincenzo Divich, um, is a solid defender. Pat Connaughton tries. You have Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, and Giannis, who are all good to great defenders, and Brooke Lopez, who I've placed a decent amount of blame on just because I feel like his drop-off as a rim protector has been big, and getting P.J. Tucker should help with the defense a little bit. But I, I wanted to show what, how you know some of those, I guess, Brooke Lopez deficiencies or I, I guess this drop off could hurt right obviously you're, you're missing out on blocks but that also means that you have situations like this where he ends up not getting a hand on this right and then Dwight Howard gets an easy put back but in a, in a scenario maybe a year or two two years ago if he gets a block on this instead of Dwight Howard getting a wide open layup on a put back he can swap this out of bounds and their defense can reset or he can maybe tip it to uh, Bobby Portis right here. Now, that's not to say that Chris Middleton isn't at fault here because he absolutely does not block out Dwight Howard and doesn't help out Brooke Lopez at all. And, you know, after this, you know, someone can, we can all just rotate, right? That's how you're supposed to play team defense. So Chris Middleton's definitely at fault here too. But, um, you know, wanted to point out some of the things that could come from Brooke Lopez, um, you know, becoming a bit older and that, that drop off that we've talked about. So on Philadelphia's side, right, this is now Seth Curry being guarded or guarding Drew Holiday. And this is something I've worried about in the past because Seth Curry, while he tries um, and, and isn't the worst defender, he's definitely not a good defender. And, you know, he's pretty small and not not a great athlete. So players are going to want to take advantage of him. And you, you're looking at an Eastern Conference that has guys that can get their own shots and that, that are able to go ISO and take advantage of mismatches. And you can get mismatches like this off of running screens, off ball screens, just having certain actions. And if you can get in a situation like this, say if you're the Celtics, you have Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum who can do this. And Kemba Walker, if he you know puts it together, might not even need to go through all the switches and, and, and stuff like that. Might just have Seth Curry on him, period. And then you have teams like Miami, right? Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Goran Dragic can all take advantage of this. Um, and then you have other teams that I'm not even thinking of, but that that will be able to take advantage of this. And you have a situation here where Drew Holiday, really just too easy, right? And and there's no help defense from from the Sixers um, help side. Um, Thibault's there, but doesn't really provide much. Ben Simmons is a bit lazy. Tobias Harris isn't doing anything here. So, you know, the, the, the Sixers could definitely do a better job of helping him out on this play, but it, it is something that you have to worry about if you're the Sixers. 
um, because Seth is going to get, I wouldn't say bullied, but people are going to look to take advantage of that matchup. Right, like you have another situation here, and this is on fast break or a transition, but again, Seth Curry just not not a great closeout and ends up giving Dante DiVincenzo a wide open lane to the basket, wide open drive, and like there's just not enough resistance, um, too easy. Philly ends up bringing three people over, right? And that leaves Bryn Forbes, who's a pretty good shooter, wide open on the corner. Drew Holiday's open for the cut, and Giannis can even cut. So they're just going to have to end up compensating at times for Seth Curry's defense and his lack of size and athleticism. And then you see here, um, you know, Milwaukee and Drew Holiday are going to get a, a wide open layup off of the bad closeout and defense by Seth Curry. So the obvious response from people are going to be, all right, just take Seth Curry out then. But it's very hard to do that because of this, right? He creates so much pressure and spacing for Philly on offense. And it is something that they have been missing for years, missing for, you know, at least the last couple of seasons. And, and it's, it's the one thing everybody pointed out to, right? With Ben Simmons, who can't shoot or won't shoot, and Joel Embiid, who obviously gets a lot of attention down low in the block, they were missing that knockdown guy who could space the floor out for them. And they had it in Bellinelli and JJ Redick a few years ago. And ever since then, they really just haven't been able to find that consistent threat, right? Tobias Harris, while he can knock down the open shot, isn't a guy that just camps out in the corner and spreads the floor out. He's a guy that's better with the ball in his hands. And granted, he's, I think, gotten better at doing that a bit. Al Horford obviously didn't work. And I think with Korkmaz, too, this year, who stepped up, you know, I I will give him credit because I think he's been playing very solid basketball as of late. But yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it's hard to... I think if you're Philadelphia, you live with it because what he gives you on offense still outweighs some of the defensive troubles he does have. But that it is something that you're going to have to to watch out for. And, and maybe there are times where teams can try to play him off the floor by just attacking him consistently. And that's where the help defense of guys like Thibel, Tobias Harris, Ben Simmons, and Joel Embiid, that's going to be really important for, the, for Philadelphia come playoff time. Like you see here again, Ben Simmons draws three guys, Seth Curry, not even a bad closeout by Drew Holiday, but able to knock it down. And that's 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 that outside shooting is so important for this team. You know, while I'm not going to say that this offense when Giannis is on the bench is better, and it's obviously not, and it's also explosive. But it is interesting the kind of offenses they can run with Giannis on the bench because you have five guys in DiVincenzo, Middleton, Brooke Lopez, Drew Holiday, and Pat Connaughton who can all space the floor, right? So they can play five out and you have Tony Bradley, who is going to stay with Brooke Lopez um, for most of the time, right? You have a big guarding a big. But Brooke Lopez is is a shooter. So by you know being able to go five out, you then allow guys like Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton to really be able to use all the space in the paint. And you even have a guy like Dante Givicenzo and Pat Connaughton, who are both very athletic, um, who, who are also able to play in those lanes. And, and I, I think Budenholzer has been pretty creative in some of the things they've been able to do with um, lineups without Giannis, but I think they could even do more stuff because it's just there's just so much space for these guys, and I, and I really do think it, it can cause matchup nightmares. And you have another situation here with Drew Holiday being the ball handler, just so patient, makes the right read because he right he comes around the screen, he knows that Brook just hit one right, and you already see Ben Simmons going out to the help. Seth Curry not quick enough to get to Dante DiVincenzo. Drew Holiday makes the perfect read, pass right on right in the shooting pocket. Good shot by DiVincenzo. Has been playing really solid as well. This is one play where it's less of a team thing, and I and I did want to point this out because I think this is something that a lot of big men don't do well, and or even are just aware of that they could be doing. But you watch a Brook Lopez here and what he does. Right, he's not even he doesn't end up setting a screen, but how he's able to engage and keep Dwight Howard onto him to to allow Giannis to, to go in for the uh, pretty much line drive dunk, right? Just straight line to the rim. And you have to be pretty creative in the way you do this because if you just hold Dwight, you can be called for a foul. It's a veteran move, but some of the things you, you, you know, that play into this, where are the refs? What angle can they see you holding him? And you just have to manipulate it because you can also make it look like he's holding you. But Brooke does a really nice job here. And I think it's something that a lot of bigs, could just watch and, and learn and get better at right so they're kind of just they have their arms locked brooke isn't holding him or anything he has dwight off balance and because of that he's not able to get to the rim and offer any kind of resistance or help on that drive you're really going to start to see in the second half why their defense is so important because they have so many athletes they're just able to really get out in transition and, and it really helps their offense just really get going you see another steal here by pat Connaughton 
and and again if their defense can continue to improve and, and be the level at where they were before it's, it's, it's just really going to help again kind of semi-transition once Giannis gets out on the break uh just just impossible to stop again this is this isn't even off a turnover it's off of a miss but it's just if they can get stops they can just get out and transition get Giannis's dunks it just it changes the whole game for them now, I've been critical of Budenholzer and how he has gotten a bit uncreative and stagnant in the offenses they run at times. It's a lot of Giannis at the top, pick and roll with, you know, or pick and pop with Brooke or just kind of head of steam, just have Giannis run in there. But this is right here. I, I like this a lot. You have a pick and roll with Giannis uh, as the ball handler and then Drew Holiday setting the screen. But then it's going to go into a dribble handoff. Or, or pretty much just a pass and then a screen with Chris Middleton where Chris Middleton rejects the screen and then Giannis now becomes the role man. And that puts a lot of pressure on the Sixers because they're already scrambling and Giannis is already uh, about to be ahead of steam going to the rim. And because of that, right, Dwight Howard has to hedge down. Danny Green is here. Ben Simmons has to step up. Even Cork Maz is shading towards both Giannis and Drew Holiday, which means DiVincenzo and Brook Lopez are wide open. I think more plays where Giannis starts the play without the ball could really help Milwaukee out. One, it saves energy for Giannis. And then just having different looks. It's not always Giannis at the top of the key, starting five feet behind the three-point line, pick and roll, and then just drive to the rim. Plays like this can, I think, get guys like DiVincenzo and Pat Connaughton more involved and keep them in rhythm. Chris Middleton, if they can continue to trust him, because I know he's had playoff issues in the past, he can continue to provide them extra playmaking. Drew Holiday is obviously another playmaker that they added this year. And I think you can just get them better looking shots at times if they can do this because, it, it again, different looks, keeps guys in rhythm, and it just it, it just saves Giannis's energy. And, 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 I, and I really like what they did here. You know, you also have Tobias Harris for the Sixers who, who's been very good this season. And he's, I think, improved a little bit as a playmaker. And even in this game, he had, he had a couple of really nice passes. But you're going to see a situation where, one, DiVincenzo falls asleep and loses his man a little bit. But, you know, he's he's been that third guy. And, and in this game, he was the other guy because Joel Embiid wasn't there. So it was him and, him and Ben Simmons who were the primary offensive, I guess, playmakers. But, you know, when Embiid is healthy, he's been able to be that consistent third guy that I think everybody always wanted him to be, at least last year, that he didn't <clears throat> really live up to. But I think he looks more comfortable and better in this in that role this year. And, you know, especially in the playoffs when he might have to do more heavy lifting, especially when Joel is off the bench, you know, he's going to get a lot of attention. So having a guy like Korkmaz, who, again, we talked about playing really good, is able to space the floor, knowing, all right, this guy's falling asleep. You know, a lot of eyes are on Tobias Harris right here. So what do you do? He slides down. Ben Simmons with a little, you know, a little um, movement there with not a screen, but, um, you know, at least pretending to or, or you know, showing that that he would. Um, you know, I think it could lead to a lot of good things. And, and you know, I mean, I, I think Philadelphia is still a bit inconsistent. And you, you always worry about the health thing, right? Knock on wood and hopefully Joel Embiid can come back as soon as possible and, and stay healthy. But, you know, I think Philly's, I think this roster is just so perfectly constructed and especially with the improved play of Tobias and, and Korkmaz. And then you look at plays like this and I know it, it looks simple, but these are plays that, that were really hard for, for the Sixers to come by at times. Like they've been really good defensively for, for the last couple of years, but they were, they were, they just had super long droughts on offense sometimes. And, and Joel was a bit inconsistent at times. Ben Simmons disappeared at times. Tobias Harris wasn't comfortable in a role, in, in his role. And, and then you didn't have Cork Maz and Seth Curry really playing, or you know, the way they are now. So, um, you know, I know we've been talking about Milwaukee a lot, but but I will say, you know, I'm I'm really happy with with the way Philly's playing, and 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 you also have to take into account, right? Like this game was close. Philadelphia, I think, had like a 19 point lead, and that was without Joel Embiid. So. They definitely have talent, definitely have some guys that can play. And 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 the good thing about really both of these teams, and I know I've talked about Milwaukee's defense not being as elite as it was, <clears throat> but when both these teams are playing well and are focused, both these teams are, are really good on both offense and defense, which is why, you know, teams, I think, I wouldn't say fear them because I think Brooklyn's still that team that, that you have to fear in the East. But that's why when, when firing on all cylinders, these two teams are still major threats that people are considering as um, contenders. You know, the crazy thing is everyone says just play off Giannis. And Ben Simmons, who in my book is one of the best defenders in the league, defensive player of the year candidate, 
And he just Giannis just makes him look silly, right? Like Ben Simmons is playing off of him. Maybe he can give him two even more space. I don't know if Ben needed to jab at him because you know it's not like Giannis is a bad ball handler, so you're not gonna like rush him. And you know Giannis has that first step and and the long step. So I don't know if Ben Simmons needed to show out and you know kind of come out like that. Um, regardless, though, I mean he just goes right at him, makes him stumble a bit. That hesitation, that you know that little hesitation gets him off balance. And then he does this next play right here. Pull up three. If he's making that, he's the best player in the world, right? There's nothing you can do. So does that. And then he and then he caps the game off with this beautiful move. Doesn't really get the gather right here. Gets the ball around his head, which is a little ugly, right? Not ideal. You want to stay low on that. You want, want to keep the ball in your shooting pocket. But if he's feeling it like that, if he's confident enough to make that shot, to even take it, that stop on a dime, right? Because you have a guy like... Dwight and, and you know he's one of the few guys I can probably contest Giannis at the rim which is saying something because Dwight's you know gone through a lot of injury surgeries and he's definitely not young anymore but still could probably contest Giannis at the rim Giannis knows that step back again the gather a little off but makes that nice little nine foot jump shot and it's 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 rough man it's it, if he's making the three and, and, and moves like that on step back and snatches like that it's, it's he's going to be unstoppable best player in the world that being said you know, again, I thought it was a a well fought game from Philadelphia. I'm sure a disappointing loss because they they probably felt like they had it in the bag. It would have been a huge win for them to beat Milwaukee without Joel Embiid, and they're definitely going to stay confident. You know, Dwight has talked about wanting to see Milwaukee in the playoffs, and well, I'm not worried about Philadelphia. I think again, they 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 don't really have too many holes. Can they be more consistent on offense? Yes, you know, but. I, I think that their defense is good. They finally have shooting. Milwaukee side, I think they've really turned it on as of late. Giannis is playing great basketball. Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday, it, you know, they're doing what they do. Brooke has been playing a lot better since the All-Star break, so maybe he just needed some time. Um, P.J. Tucker should help with their depth, especially defensively. I think their bench offense is still a little iffy, but, you know, you, you go eight deep in the playoffs. Maybe it's not something you need to worry about too much. Um Still have Brooklyn as the favorites in the East. I think that firepower is just ridiculous. I mean, how good they're playing even without KD shows you just how much talent they have. But yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, we will be back possibly tomorrow. Probably tomorrow with another video and then take Sunday off. But yeah, uh, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment. And also follow us on our social media pages. And we will see you guys again soon. Peace.